Well, we all know that getting a flat tire is never fun. I remember one time in college when uh, a buddy and I went up to Kalamazoo from South Bend to the, to the ice arena there to go to a rock concert. And we, we went to the concert. It was great. We were on our way back. We had borrowed a buddy's car. And along the way, the front, front passenger tire blew out. And I don't know if you've been in southern Michigan. There's nothing there. It's just farms. And so we're like, OK. And of course, this is the early 90s, right? There's no internet. There's no cell phones. And, and we go, we pop the trunk, get the spare out, and uh, get the jack. And my buddy's like, where's the rest of it? I'm like, I don't know. We didn't have enough pieces for, for, all the, for the jack to work. So we're like, oh, no, what are we going to do now? And I see, like, off in, off in the distance, there's a light of a farm. It's at least a mile, you know, in that direction. And it's pitch black. I'm like, ah, I don't know what to do. Like, so we said a little prayer, and, uh, and pretty soon this old beat-up pickup pulled up behind us, and six kind of tough guys got out of the truck, and they said, uh, so uh, you guys need some help? I said, yeah, you know, we were, at the, we were at the concert, and we're trying to get back to South Bend. Like, oh, man, we were there, too. It was awesome, you know. Uh, so let's, you know, they looked in their truck. They didn't have a jack either. So what they did is uh, my buddy, I got the spare. My buddy, uh, who's a, who's a linebacker from Jersey, he was ready to get the, get the nuts off the, the, the wheel. And the six guys picked up the front of the car for us. <laughs> and we, we changed that thing. But the, and we got back and, and uh, gave our buddy a, 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 you know, a good, you know, where, where's your, don't, why don't you have a jack in your car? But, uh, but it was fixed in a matter of minutes. The thing was, though, is that there was no getting back to South Bend with that car. Like, a flat tire, you cannot drive on it for very far. And if you do, you're going to make, you know, make worse, worse damage to your car. So when you get a flat tire, it has to be fixed, and it can be fixed. Well, what about our hearts? Unlike fixing a flat tire, many of us live life with a certain part of our heart that's flat. And we try to drive around on it. Drive around and think, you know, this is as good as it gets. How many of us have been driving that on a flat tire of discouragement, feeling abandoned, broken, or wounded heart? And the longer we carry them, and the more we drive on that flat tire, the more it becomes part of who we are. It's like, this is me. This is my life. I guess this is it. Many of us can doubt the power and the desire of the Lord to do something about that, to heal us. This unexpressed grief in our hearts can trap us in our own prison, that we need to be set free. Well, the good news is that the Lord desires us and wants us to meet us and to fix that flat tire. You know, today, Bartimaeus has a life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ. We don't know much about him except that he's blind, that he begs, that his dad's named Timaeus. But as this encounter unfolds, we find out more about Bartimaeus. He's blind, and he doesn't want to be blind anymore. Who knows how long he's been blind, how difficult his life has been because of that how long he's been driving around with that on that flat tire. And what is extraordinary is that Bartimaeus thinks that Jesus can do something about it, about his specific brokenness of being blind. And so he cries out, Son of David, have pity on me. This cry of Bartimaeus expresses his faith. Son of David, that's the messianic title. And we also discover that Bartimaeus has courage. He has faith and he has courage because he won't stop crying out to Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me, even when everyone else is telling him to be quiet. Of course, they can see, right? But he insists on crying out to Jesus 
for him to do something. And how does Jesus respond to this man's wound, his blindness, his faith and his courage? Jesus stops and he calls him. And the people around him suddenly have a change of heart. They tried then to help Bartimaeus to get to Jesus. And Bartimaeus throws aside his cloak, which is probably the only thing he has. And that shows just he's going to go all in on this one. He's eager to encounter Jesus. And St. Mark doesn't, doesn't include this important detail, but we can presume it. What was it like for Bartimaeus to be before the Lord and have the Lord look upon him. Because even when our eyes are closed, we can sometimes feel someone looking at us. What was it like for Bartimaeus to feel that gaze of Jesus? And then Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? It's a strange question. Isn't it obvious? But it's important because it gives Bartimaeus the opportunity to, to respond, to ask, to exercise his freedom, to participate interiorly with Jesus' d- desire. And Jesus responds to Bartimaeus' need, and Bartimaeus asks simply, I want to see. I want to see. And Jesus gave him the ability to see. Our Lord wanted him to see. And Bartimaeus' response to this is not only of his healing now, is that then he follows Jesus along the way. He becomes a disciple. He's radically transformed in body and soul from this simple encounter with Jesus. With Bartimaeus' faith, his courage, his willingness to ask his simplicity, his humility about the whole thing. Well, what about us? Can we put ourselves in Bartimaeus' place? Where do we feel blind? Where are we hurting? Where in our life is that flat tire that we've been driving on for so long, for too long, Have we fallen into discouragement, just accepted that as just the way things are for good? This is as good as it gets for me. Where is that place in your heart? I invite invite us to discover that. We all have them. Where is my flat tire? Because somewhere deep inside, each one of us is a burning desire to finally become the person God wanted us to be. We, learn to, we yearn to be fully alive and to give ourselves as, as a gift wholeheartedly to the Lord. Bartimaeus, whatever he experienced interiorly, whatever fears he had, it was Jesus' closeness that helped him to rise up and to call out to him. We need to do that too. And you know, this kind of Radical transformation is not just some nice story in the Bible that happened a long time ago. Jesus offers the same kind of healing to us now. He's here, and he desires to encounter each one of us in the place where we're exhausted, where we're spent, where we're done, where we're shut down, wherever that is. And I was thinking about this, too, because, you know, last night we had our Alpha Retreat uh, Friday night and sat, uh, Saturday, all day yesterday. And it was extraordinary. We had 100, 100 people from the parish register for that. And I, see, I look around and I can see a lot of you who were, th- who were there. And, and uh, yesterday was all about being open to the Holy Spirit and to welcome the Holy Spirit. And uh, I tell you what, in 26 years of being a priest, I never have witnessed what I saw last night at St. Louis Church in Jervis. This enormous outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all those who were there. It was awesome. In fact, I was talking to Kevin and to, and to Chris Anderson, who's, uh, they've done many Alpha retreats, and they were, had commented they'd never seen anything quite like that either. 
And I'm really excited about what that means for those people who are there, but also because we're all one body in our parish about the, the fruits and, the, and what, what the, Lord is, the Holy Spirit is going to bring into our parish through that retreat. Super excited about that. But the Lord is alive. He's at work. He desires us. All he's asking is for us to welcome him in. Jesus sees. He stops. He calls. The healing process begins by responding to that call, hearing that call, to let Jesus gaze upon you and me. Let that gaze penetrate. He longs for our wholeness. Let him ask you and me, what do you want me to do for you? What would you say right now? Jesus said, your name, what do you want me to do for you? Maybe we don't know, and that's okay. Our response could be, Lord, I really don't know. Let him ask and respond to that, to let him fix that flat tire. He is God, and he's here. He's just poured out the Holy Spirit upon us. And he longs to save and to heal us. And he is calling. Mm